Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. This is episode 12 uh, for the AWS Security, and today we're going to discuss about the HSM and KMS. Uh, hit the like button if you uh, enjoy watching this video, and leave me a comment if you have any more suggestions. Uh, let's get into this. So, first question is what is HSM? HSM stands for the Hardware Security Module, and you must have come across like you know HSM uh, when uh, probably a few years ago when we were dealing with the on-premise data center where you have the physical device storing uh, uh, or like secure key storage and management. Uh, I have done several audits and where I came across and I have audited several HSM as well, uh, which pretty much uh, kind of handles all the secure, uh, storing the secure information. But this is generally on-premise. Now when we move to the AWS, of course, uh, the HSM re remains the same. The only part changes is it becomes the cloud HSM. So that's what uh, AWS has. Uh, they offer the cloud HSM. So it's a dedicated device uh, in your VPC uh, and separated from the other networks for latency and security reasons. So you could have two HSM into one cluster, uh, maybe into two different uh, regions. So if one of the HSM goes down, you can still have access to another one uh, in your same cluster. So And, of course, you have in your dedicated VPC, so uh, no one else can access uh, your HSM. Now, uh, during the when you are creating an HSM or when you are storing the keys inside the HSM, generally it's the customer responsibility uh, to control and manage your keys. What AWS does, if we go back to our, uh, I guess, episode 7 or 8 when we talked about the shared responsibility model, AWS essentially does is manage the box. They do not manage what's stored underneath the box or in the box. So, as I said, you can place it in different availability zones and can be clusters. So, uh, in case of a disaster, you still have access to your HSM uh, from another region. Uh, it can also help, like you know, for load balancing. If there are multiple requests coming into for one of the HSM, uh, you can always uh, balance the load and also replicate the keys for disaster recovery planning. Uh, this is going to be a perfect solution if your organization requires a dedicated hardware to store the keys. Now, I know there are so many compliance which do ask for this, so that's why uh, this is a, going to be a good solution uh, if your organization does require dedicated hardware to store such keys. So this is the uh, HSM, and the another uh, good service that AWS provides. So for example, let's say you do not need a dedicated hardware to store the keys. Then you can essentially use the KMS, which stands for Key Management Service. Now what it does is it manages a service that allows you to create and control your encryption keys. Now advantage of KMS over HSMs are you can use IAM policies for KMS access, so you can define who can have access to KMS. Uh, just like any other resources in the AWS. And then you can also have like AWS services integrated directly with the KMS. So things like S3, EFS are directly integrated with the KMS. So you can have easily access to these keys uh, while using the services. So uh, th that's an advantage over the HSM. Now the AWS Cloud HSM uh, uh, in the KMS, it stores customer master keys. So this is still called Cloud HSM because, of course, this is a key management service in the cloud instead of on-premise. So KMS stores the customer master keys. Um, so I'll, I'll go over the, uh, this uh, diagram uh, to kind of explain how it really works. So what happens is, for example, let's say you have a plain text data key, which, of course, you want to... Uh, you have a plain text and you want to encrypt and, and store it, uh, let's say, in the S3 or EFS. So you have a plain text, you apply with the, uh, like, you know, encryption algorithm and you get the encrypted ciphertext, which you store in the S3 or EFS. Now, when you store this uh, in data in your S3 and EFF, EFS, along with that, you also store the encrypted data key, so which key you had used to uh, kind of encrypt this data. 
Now, at first, it sounds a terrible idea because you are storing your data and the key in one place, and that's against the security best practices we have we all know about. But how it really works is, what KMS is gonna do is it's gonna encrypt your uh, whatever the encryption key is with the master key, and that master key will be stored here with the uh, data, uh, whatever the data you have encrypted and stored. But the key which was used to encrypt the key would be stored inside the KMS. So now it becomes even more secure. Uh, the reason is if uh, an attacker is able to get hold of S3 or uh, EFS and get hold of all the data and the key to decrypt the data, but it first had to decrypt the key to decrypt the data. And the key which can decrypt the data is stored under the KMS. So that's why they have to get into the KMS as well as the uh, S3 or EFS to kind of uh, see how uh, like, you can know, decrypt the data. So that's why it makes this service more secure. So now if you see here, so KMS stores custom master keys. right? So this is the master key which were used to encrypt the key. Now KMS envelops one layer and stores the top key. Yeah. So if uh, so for example whatever the key you had used to encrypt the uh, your encryption key that's the key that KMS is going to store. The encrypted data key is stored with the data. As I said, the data key which you had used to encrypt the data will be stored along with the data, which is a terrible solution at the first, but then if you consider that data key is also encrypted with the key which is stored in the KMS. So it's not that terrible now because attacker has to get hold of the KMS as well as the, where the data is stored. So that's why it's not terrible. Now let's uh, jump to our uh, AWS account and kind of see how this actually works, like how you can create the keys and, and how does it actually work. All right, so uh, this is our uh, management console, and uh, if we see here, uh, let's uh, look up the KMS, Key Management Service. Now here you will see there are three options, right? So there's one, AWS Managed Keys, so certain services uh, which, as I said, like, you know, is by default integrated with the KMS, such as EFS, S3. So AWS also create the keys if you don't define one. Uh, they use their own key to encrypt the stuff. So that's where you will find uh, the keys here. The other one is customer managed keys. So if you have your own key, like if you uh, develop or uh, write your own key, then you can uh, have it here. You can see here. And then there is a custom key store. So let's go back and Actually, let's go back to our uh, console and uh, go to the EFS, so which is uh, the Elastic File System, and this is integrated with the KMS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, file system. I'll uh, keep the targets as is, and uh, we'll keep it as general purpose. We'll make sure we want to enable the encryption of data at rest, right? And we're going to use the Elastic file system uh, key. So whatever the AWS provides, we're gonna use that key for encryption. Uh, of course, if you want to have a certain uh, policy, like who can access what, you can define those. Uh, of course, right now we are not much concerned about that, so I'm just gonna create the uh, file system for now. Uh, so it's gonna take a couple seconds. Right, so now we have this uh, uh, like you know key status AWS elastic file system here's the ARN if you remember if you just try to remember 0080 is the last four digit of the ARN now if we go back to our key management service so we use we have not created our own key we use whatever the AWS provided key and this is the one uh, which was part of the AWS managed key 0080 and we use that to encrypt the file system. Okay, fair enough. Now, let's say uh, we want to create our own key. So, how you do it is, 
uh, of course you select either want to symmetric or asymmetric uh, I'll just gonna go with symmetric I'm gonna choose the key MS uh, I'll say cyber sec demo okay you cannot have space in there so I'm just gonna create this I'm not want to add any tags uh, of course you can manage the keys the way as I said before, uh, the difference between the Cloud HSM and the KMS is here you can apply the IAM policies. So if you want certain users to be able to access the keys versus like in a whole group, you can do all these things here. And you can also allow key administrator to delete the keys. So uh, you create that, you define the key usage permissions. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, here you can review the edit the key policy so based on whatever we have selected previously it will come up here in the JSON format and you hit the finish and it, as you can see now we have this key created right so now if we go back to our EFS so earlier uh, we created a file system using the AWS provided key now let's try to create a file system with the key that we just created so here you'll have option to select the key and I'm going to select the one that I have. Uh, of course we'll keep all the thing as default and here you'll be able to see once it finishes uh, processing that uh, our key was cybersecurity demo and here is the ARN uh, CHC6E so if we go back to our KMS and yep hc6e so uh that's how uh the kfs and uh of course you can use the same service with the other as well so you can use the uh like you know s3 as well to encrypt the file system and everything using the key ms and store the key there so these are our two most kind of very important uh subjects of the aws security because when you are auditing or configuring uh, architecture for your uh, for your users, uh, you want to make sure you select the right solution based on whether to use uh, Cloud HSM versus KMS. And if you want to use the KMS, which services are integrated by default, whether you should create your own key or use the AWS provided key, uh, all this uh, matters a lot. Uh, not just because of the security, but also from compliance perspective. So you want to keep this in mind while defining the architecture. So uh, that's it I wanted to cover in this session. Uh, again, hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and leave me a comment if you have anything. Uh, if not, I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.